Welcome to ProCAD's 2D application supporting module tutorials. Watch the entire video or use the on screen table of contents to skip to a specific topic. The Spec Generator tutorial covers the following topics Creating specs, Spec options, General parameters, Branch fittings, Components, and Import export. Let's begin. Double click the spec generator icon to open the application. Our first topic in the tutorial is creating specs. Once the spec generator opens, we will see the English and metric standard which come default. ProCAD software works in both English and metric units. Under the common folder, we see the default specs that come with the software. We have the A spec, 150 pound class rating, B spec, 300 pound, C spec, 600. D spec 900. All the basic specs ready to go. The Twin Lakes project was created for the demos and the tutorials. To create a new spec, simply click on the spec pull down menu, select new, or right click and select new spec. We can create copies of specs. So if we'd like to create a copy of the B spec, select our Twin Lakes project and create the copy. We now have a copy of the B spec underneath our Twin Lakes project. This can be renamed. The spec is then created. We can move the specs from one location to another simply by clicking and dragging. I can move it into the common spec area which then all standards would have access to that spec or I can leave it underneath a specific standard like our Twin Lakes project. The next topic is the spec options. Under general options we'll see the manufacturer valve tags so we can quickly add a manufacturer to our list simply type in the name click add and now we have that manufacturer available when updating and modifying our spec. Easy to do. The next tab is our material options. And under our material options, we can see the available schedules and weights for each of our material types carbon steel, stainless steel, and chrome moly. And we can set the schedule simply by clicking on and off, as well as the material grades. If we want to add a material, let's say we want to add copper, we can click add. And now I have the material of copper. I can then select the weights. So maybe just standard is fine. Material grades maybe not exist. If I do have a code, I can put it in. Copper ABC. Click Add. And it is now available. Next is our part number. If we know the part numbers for all of our components, a listing of all the components shows up. We can, for instance, go to our crosses. Go to regular crosses. Say butt weld. And if we know with the code or the part number, we can place that in. Easy to do. We also have our weights and schedules. So the common weights and schedules show up from standard, extra strong, double extra strong, schedules 40, 60, 180, 160. If they do not exist, we can add them in very easily. And we can remove them as well. Under the material list, we'll now see our materials for the material group. So we have our carbon steel stainless chromoly, our newly created copper. If I select copper, we will see the available material code that I put in. And we can add it to the existing list. Anything that doesn't need to be there we can remove. This is only affecting the copper. There's also a subgrouping for all of the components, so butt welded fittings, weldolettes. And our last option is just company information. We can add company information, the name, address. This information will show up as a header if the spec is printed. The next topic to cover is general parameters. So we've created our spec, the TLP-B, 300 pound. Let's double click it 
to open it to see more information. In the data pane area, you'll see all the information any changes made will only affect this spec. So under the general parameters, we see things like the service, the material, some information that we can place about the spec itself. We can set a spec revision, the revision date. This is the file location where the spec information is stored, and then we can click Apply. This information now resides with that spec. Other parameters are the welded flange category, where we can set our ANSI rating. Click down to change, leave it at 300. Flange facing, depending on the requirements, leave it at raised faced. Stud bolts or machine bolts. Gasket thicknesses. We can set level at elbow at ratings, lap joints. We can adjust the flange face descriptions, and then some basic information about our valves, which we can change to all full port, venturi, for the ball valves, the check valves, the different types, swing check, wafer check, and plug valves. Our last category is the threaded socket weld, and this would be when we hit small pipe sizes, for instance, one and a half inch and smaller, and we can set that size to whatever we need, one and a half inch. By default, it will be threaded fittings or, or screw. We can set it to socket weld or threaded. We can also set the pipe rating for those smaller fittings, 2,000, 3,000, up to 9,000. We can also set the valve rating, 800 class rating, to 15 to 2,500. And we can set the default pipe nipple length. Typically, it's 3 or 4 inch. We'll leave it at 3 inch. Any changes that are made here, we can click Apply, and it will save the changes. Our next topic is branch fittings. Let's select the branch fitting tab, and it shows us all the settings for our branch fittings, from quarter inch all the way to 48 inch, showing the default components that would be placed with any particular size. As we had copied the B spec, the information shown is from our B spec. There are three ways to create the branch fitting table. The first is to copy it from our existing spec like we did. We can also go in, remove all of these sizes, and then we can just use the default settings for the software, click Apply, and all the defaults show up. Again, all the way up to 48 inch. The last way would be to manually go into our main and branch size, set our main and branch size, set the component we'd like to place, and then click Add. So we can actually build our branch fitting table from scratch, starting at quarter inch all the way up to 48 inch. So let's say we want to go in and select some other fitting. We could then set it to a weld alette, maybe a thread alette, and we can continue doing this until we get up to the 48 inch size. Easiest is typically to copy from an existing spec. We'll pick it from our B spec, apply, and the defaults are there. Then it's just a matter of adjusting maybe one or two of the sizes or deleting the ones that you don't want to use. Five inch, for instance, we could clear out all of the five inch sizes if we don't need them. and the five inch sizes are gone. Click apply to save the changes. Once a branch fitting table has been created and saved, we can create a print under the specs. We can select print. There is an option to print the branch chart to have a hard copy of it. The next topic to discuss is the components. So within our spec, we have a components tab as well as a wall thickness tab. Wall thickness allows us to go in and adjust the wall thickness by pipe size. So all of our pipe sizes have a defined wall thickness. We need to change, select the size, select the new wall thickness, and then click Add. And it changes the wall thickness. It also automatically goes to the next pipe size. So I could quickly change all of my sizes up to 48 inch to be double extra strong. To save changes, click Apply. We can then take a look at our components. All of the existing components are shown on the left, and we'll take a look at the elbows as a sample. 
90 degree butt welded long radius elbows. In the data pane area, it shows all of our information. So it shows our size, the weighting, which came from our preset wall thickness, shop or field, the actual description, and this would show up in our bill of material, our material, and our manufacturer. We can change the manufacturer to Acme, we can change our material grade to any of the material grades listed the weights. If we needed to change it, any of those features can be changed simply by selecting. Once the changes are made, make sure to apply. When creating the spec, should a lot of information need to be changed, for instance, the manufacturer or the material, we can actually do a global change rather than having to select each one for each of the components within our listing. Select the Global Change tab. Select the manufacturer. We'll find all instances of Bonnie Forge and we'll replace that with another one of our manufacturers that we had placed in, Acme and we'll click replace. Careful with this one as it changes all instances of Bonnie Forge, not just for the elbows, but for all components that have Bonnie Forge. Go back to our component list and we'll now see that the manufacturer has been now changed to Acme. Quick way of global changing for a particular spec. Again, only the spec TLP-B is affected. The last topic in this tutorial is the import-export. Once our spec has been defined and created, we can then create an export of the spec for backup purposes or for giving to clients who require the spec or in a standalone installation where we need to copy it from one machine to another. Select the Specs tab. There's an Import and Export option. Select Export. Search the folder where you'd like to store the spec. Click Export, and the file is created. There is our exported specs file. To import a spec, simply select the Import tool, search the folder where the specs would be stored, find the spec to import, click Import. And because we already have a spec existing, we could overwrite it, and it would overwrite the existing one. If you're not sure, click No, and it creates a copy within the Twin Lakes project. This can be renamed, deleted. We'll just delete it, the entire spec. We can also print the spec, the spec file, branch chart, all material files. It can all be printed for hard copy reference. This concludes the topics covered in the Spec Generator tutorial. Please review the topics in this module or select another module.